If you were here in 2014, you remember the wake up call the city received in a report done by Harvard researcher Raj Chetty. It was called Land of Opportunity. It found Charlotte was dead last, 50th out of the 50 largest cities in the country when measuring upward economic mobility. It was basically saying if a child was born into poverty, it was really difficult to rise out of it. It was a bucket of cold water dumped on a community that prided itself as a shining example as a city on the move. People and businesses were moving here. Something new was being built every day. But it certainly didn't mean everyone's life was getting better. Charlotte's a beautiful city. There's a lot of opportunity here, but unfortunately not everyone has access to that opportunity. If you're poor and your parents were poor and your grandparents in that succession, you must want to be poor. Um, no. <laughs> no, that's not the case. And it triggered a citywide reaction and launched a number of new programs, some by the city, many by our nonprofits. Affordable housing initiatives were launched. Pre-K programs were expanded to all children. And additional support was provided to Johnson C. Smith University. We think Johnson C. Smith can play an important part in solving that. In fact, we think that there's probably no institution better prepared to help close that gap. How so? In large part because we graduate the significant number of, of, um, of students from the, from the area who can move up that economic mobility ladder. And now there is some evidence those efforts and others are slowly paying off. Ten years after the original report, we got an update. We're no longer 50th out of 50. We've improved 12 spots to number 38. I think even more importantly, in the list that Chetty has created, Charlotte ranks number three in terms of improvement overall, which is tremendous, especially for a community that was dead last. If you compare us to others that were in that bottom quartile, no other community saw the type of progress that we experienced. So yes, we should be encouraged and say we have made progress and we have a very long way to go. That right there is uh, Sherry Chisholm. She is executive director of Leading on Opportunity. It's an organization that advocates and tracks the progress Charlotte is making when it comes to upward mobility. You're going to hear more from her in just a moment. But first, what exactly is this new data showing us? We'll take a look here. First off, it is comparing kids born in 1978 to kids born in 1992 and what they are earning as adults at the age of 27. Overall, it shows those born in 1992 who came from a low income family are making 5% more than their counterparts born in 1978. This is inflation adjusted, by the way. And you'll notice here that the national average, that says top line, while still a bit higher, was actually down more than 4%. So we beat the trend there. The news even more encouraging for black children from low income families. Incomes for those born in 92 were 17% higher than those born in 78. And we're now actually above the national average. So progress, yes. Victory, not yet. Economic mobility became the language around progress here in Charlotte, which is great. It gives us a shared language to talk about our shared challenge. But for those who were struggling back in 2014, many of them are still living in that same condition. That's the thing, though, but sometimes that's frustrating because for those who are in it right now, mm -hmm. they want a solution now. Right now, right? yeah. And I understand wanting a solution now. The challenges that folks face today are the result of poor policies of the past. So when we think about the Jim Crow South, slavery, redlining, all of those things are what made it difficult now for black folks in particular in the Southeast to have home ownership, which is the, um, one of the most significant ways to get to wealth building. And so yes, I feel them when they say, or individuals say, you know, yes, we've seen progress, but it doesn't address what's happening now. They're absolutely right. And they deserve for us to institute policy, to give funding to, and build programs that help us get to a better place now and an even better place in the future. And to have data that shows, right, you're yeah. seeing progress that validates, obviously, and I suppose makes it easier then to go back to the table when you have to continue these programs, get funding for these programs. 
data that shows on a national level, but what I'm also even more excited to say is that we have the data on a local level. So Lead In on Opportunity developed a tool called the Opportunity Compass. A compass tells you where you are and where you want to go. Yeah. And so on a two to three year clip, we have leading indicators of economic mobility that we can use to hold ourselves accountable, to ass assess the work that we've done, and to make smarter decisions moving forward, both as a funding community and a nonprofit community. And we've seen lots of news conferences, right, when announcements are being made or funds are being provided for low-income housing, uh, those kinds of things, uh, affordable housing, I should say. Um, are we still doing enough? Does the business community, et cetera, still need to be doing more? I don't think there's a such thing as enough. Right? If we want a better Charlotte of tomorrow, we need to invest in Charlotte today. Economic mobility is like fitness. You don't exercise on Monday mm -hmm. and then you're gonna be healthy for the rest of the month. You need to do a little bit to a lot every day to make sure you maintain and even more to grow stronger. And that's where we are as a community. At least now we know what we need to be working on. Now it's maintaining our commitment to it. Some progress, still some work uh, to do here. All right, we're on your